What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Wirecast. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be doing another update to the U.S. versus Maxwell case, and this is a uh, somewhat significant update. Uh, so as I told you guys back about a month ago, I said that by the end of February, we'll know exactly what's going to happen with Juror 50 regarding the so-called inaccurate question uh, answers that he provided during jury selection. And we have an answer. The judge has come out and said that she will not be granting a new trial based on the motion that Gillen Maxwell side filed about two weeks ago, which I told you guys was was ridiculous. So she's like, she's basically <laughs> within one sentence in this ruling. She basically sw uh, swatted that aside. But she did say that she will be here. Uh, she will be hearing out and questioning under oath Juror 50, Scotty David, to ask him if he actually gave false answers during the jury selection process. OK, and this is important. Uh, and the reason that this is a this is an important technicality is because the Sixth Amendment allows from the Constitution, the U.S. Constitution, allows for defendants to have a fair trial, which means that the jury selection process and the trial procedures have to be followed to the T. And if they're not, then uh, bad guys can get away. The criminals get away when the prosecution or the jury or the judge makes a mistake and the defense counsel can point it out. And if it's going to be reversed on appeal, then the uh, judges will have to listen and take into account the mistake. Stake. So that's why these technicalities are important. The technicalities usually come from some kind of constitutional principle or some other, you know, individual rights thing. That's usually how these defense the people like Crosby, that's how they get away, uh, these criminals, because somebody somewhere makes a mistake. So Judge Nathan wants to make sure that everything is solid and that juror 50 here did not intentionally lie on that uh, juror questionnaire. Right. So this that's what this whole thing is about. So. Let's look at the document here. Judge Nathan published this on the 24th uh, this morning. And uh, regarding the uh, the request for a new trial, this is what she said. On January 19th, 2022, the defendant filed a motion for a new trial pursuant to federal rule of criminal procedure 33 on the basis that juror 50, quote, falsely answered a material question during voir dire, that's jury selection, and that had he answered truthfully, he would have been subject to a challenge for cause. So... So let's let's go through this real slow. OK, so the first thing here, like I said, um, the court denies the defendant's motion for a new trial on the current record. The current record includes the ridiculous motions that they filed, uh, the law memorandum of law that I that I ridiculed on my channel a couple, uh, I think, two weeks ago. I'll link that video up here so you guys can go check it out. That that thing had nothing to do with Juror 50. They made ridiculous arguments that the judge had already reviewed. So that's why the judge is saying, as of the current record, including that document, we're not going to grant you. She's not going to grant you a new trial, but she says that she will go on to question the uh, question juror 50. The judge says regarding juror 50 and his conflicting statements to media outlets, the court concludes and the government concedes that the demanding standard for holding a post verdict evidentiary hearing is met as to whether juror 50 failed to respond truthfully during the jury selection process to whether he was a victim of sexual abuse. Following trial, juror 50 made several direct direct, unambiguous statements to multiple media outlets about his own experience that did not pertain to jury deliberations and that cast doubt on the accuracy of his responses during jury selection. Juror 50's post-trial statements are, quote, clear, strong, substantial, and incontrovertible evidence that a specific non-speculative impropriety, namely a false statement during um, jury selection, what has occurred. That's according to precedent set by Baker, um, 2008. 18, uh, and she goes on to say, to be clear, the potential impropriety is not that someone with a history of sexual abuse may have served on a jury. There's no problem with that. Rather, it is the potential failure to respond truthfully to questions during the jury selection process that asked for uh, material information so that any potential bias could be explored. So the Sixth Amendment allows for a fair trial, which means that the jury selection process, which is part of the, the beginning of the trial process, the pretrial process, that has to be good too. If there's a mistake made during the pretrial process, that can affect the trial process and therefore get in the way of Gillian Maxwell's Sixth Amendment rights. Okay, Even if she, they could be the worst criminal in the world, the constitutional rights still apply. That's how the Founding Fathers designed our system. 
system. That's how it works. Okay. That's why these problems, uh, that's why these uh, questions have to be uh, asked and answered. And uh, yes, it's, you know, long and arduous and, and annoying, but nevertheless, this is how a, uh, a republic works, is a constitutional republic. That's what we are technically. And when you have a constitution, you have to abide by it. Okay. She goes on to say the court denies the request to conduct a hearing with respect to other jurors, which Gill and Maxwell's side also want to do. The court also denies the defendant's request for a broader hearing and pre-hearing discovery. Okay, so she's not going to be doing, dealing with any, any of that. She's going to be getting straight to the juror. I like how straightforward the judge is here. The court therefore orders that a hearing take place at which the court will question juror 50 under oath. The judge will be questioning Scotty David and asking him very directed questions. And this will be taking place on March 8th at 10 a.m. Uh, the court orders juror 50 to appear in courtroom 906 of the Thurgood Marshall United States courtroom, blah, 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 in New York. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, so signed by Judge Nathan. So this will be taken care of by early March, basically. Right. So we we know what we're doing here. We have a plan of attack uh, by the end of February, by the or by early March. We should know whether we're going to have a second trial for Gill and Maxwell or not. OK, I'm still holding on to hope that the judge will find what I think is the case, which is that he just simply made a mistake. He did not intentionally mean to lie, but the judge may determine that even if it was a mistake, if it, if it was it was a big enough mistake where there might be some question about the fairness of the trial uh, of the of who was sitting on the jury. If the juror, if the jurors are somehow, um, you know, unrepairably uh, biased against the defendant, then that's that goes against the Sixth Amendment, and therefore we have to have a new trial. But that determination has to be made after the judge hears what Juror 50's reasoning is for why he got that question wrong. So there's still hope that um, that the judge will ju judge will accept his uh, his answer here. He will have to explain himself directly to the judge. Okay. And that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching as always. Obviously, I'll be bringing you guys more updates uh, when they come up. I predict that the next video is going to be after this hearing uh, takes place. But if something happens before then, I'll be covering it. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching as always. If you want to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below. And I much appreciate your support. See you guys next time. As always, peace. So that's...